Jobtron. Man, look at all these games. They just don't make them like Cool Spot anymore. If only they knew my yearning for a real game. A game based off something terrible and from the 90s and starring Tim Allen. That's the one I want. If only they would make a home improvement video game. Nope. Home improvement. Oh, the memories just come flooding back. It was a television sitcom back in the 90s that started the Oscar gobbling career of Tim Allen and surprisingly the television career of Pamela Anderson. What? That's what I said. It was, uh, a show. One of those concoctions of the 90s moral culture and family-centric importance. Like most shows of this caliber, the cheesy level was somewhere between Family Matters and Full House. If you go past Full House, I seriously think you just disappear into the void. Uncharted territory. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Aside, the main point is, they made a game out of this? Like, really? I understand that back then if it had a face, they made a freaking game out of it, but really? Home improvement, the game? I mean, for shit's sake, have some restraint. That's about as good of an idea as making a first-person shooter out of Sister Sister. Ah, my favorite publisher absolutely copied Sierra's logo. So we start off here on the set of Tool Time. You know, that weird show that Tim Allen had in the show that totally would have been a viable show in real life. By the way, I, I would pay to see that shit. I'd sit in the splash zone. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Why I say that? So seriously, it's just them talking to this one swanky loop from the coolest club in town. Did I say swanky? Let me just go ahead and rearrange that. There we go. So like, they just talk for like five hours. Seriously, look how long this dialogue is. Back at base, they were like, okay, our demographic is kids. Now, what are kids like? How about a series of levels where Tim Allen explores the true depth of his love for his family and wife? Oh, uh, fucking tool time cutscenes? Print that shit! So, as all great storylines go, someone steals one of the tools he needs on his show and leaves him a cryptic serial killer message that if he ever wants to see this tool again, he has to go back to the Stone Age. I, ca I can't even believe... Oh, where's the Pillsbury Doughboy Award? Paul's... what's the... Uh, Paul Newberry? The one, the one when we were kids! So naturally, that means the set next door is in the Stone Age. Okay, yeah. It could, it could be worse. I've, see, I've seen worse. So immediately he's doing this annoying shit, just like, immediately he's doing this. Whoa, hey, jeez man, I don't remember ordering any jalapenos on this pizza. What's all this? He's got like 10 different dazzling moves and I have no idea what any of them do. And they just all sparkle, what? I mean, the graphics are appealing so far. I mean, just look at this, this is ridiculous! I never once in my life thought I'd ever be making Tim Allen scoot along on a jackhammer. You get different weapons and use them with A, and that's basically all you'll be using. None of this dazzle sparkles, you know, I don't know. So as you may have guessed, the main enemy here is going to be dinosaurs. Yeah. I mean, after all, the first thing I think of when I think of home improvement is dinosaurs. Yep. <laughs> have you noticed that I tend to review things about dinosaurs a lot? I swear, I didn't even notice until you guys pointed it out to me. Tis what you might call a coincidence. This time as well. I mean, I picked this game because I wanted to see what I would get from a home improvement Super Nintendo game, and I got... DINOSAURS?! <sighs> I'd, I'd be crazy if I said this isn't what I was expecting. It's just like when you see a spider mob in an MMO, or a skeleton enemy in an RPG. It's like, wow, how long did it take you to come up with that one? You're really breaking new grounds here, guys. So basically what you're doing here is going around and collecting scattered crates because they were too lazy to make a real game. And there's like five or six or eighty on each level. Only problem is, you don't know where they are, so you gotta navigate this completely repetitive and mind-bending landscape to find them. And most of the time, you just end up running in circles all over the damn place. You can usually tell how blatantly terrible a game is gonna be if it's made like this. With the whole collect X and Y level before reaching the exit sort of thing, now it can be done well like in Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and in fact, that may be the finest example of this format. The way it was done in Mighty Max and in this game are the completely wrong way to do it. Come to think of it, this game is an awful lot like Mighty Max. Like, wow, really a lot. I guess this was just the good old formula for making a game suck back in the 16-bit era. So back to these enemies I was talking about. They impossible! 
Oh, they made sure that no matter what you're doing, when you're doing it, you're gonna be getting hit by something. It's freaking infuriating! You get hit by a dragonfly, you fall, you slide backwards into an ant, you end up getting hit by a projectile while trying to dodge a pterodactyl shit and eggs and an ant! It's everywhere! You're supposed to feel like you can dodge enemies in a game. Another big problem with this game is you can't rush through it like you can in Mario or Sonic or Donkey Kong. You, you gotta play it like surgery, or you're going to die. A lot! You would probably be disgusted if you knew how many times I died just on this first level. It's incredibly unforgiving. So let's go down here for a sec. What did I see? What am I seeing here? What, no, what am I? No, is this? Is this? Am I right now at this moment as Tim Allen from Home Improvement using a lightsaber chainsaw to fight a raptor? <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can last this out. Okay, so like, you gotta find the boxes, but where the hell are they? It doesn't tell you. Oh, unless you stand still for a few seconds. I mean, if it just tells you anyways, why isn't it on your heads-up display? What inevitably ends up happening is you start periodically standing around like an idiot, watching Tim Allen use what he read in a book was humor, as the game tells you the exact direction to go. Oh, it's less than thrilling. Alright, I got one box left to go. Let me just go ahead and try to get it. Should be easy. Okay, sweet. Next level. Alright, so it's like the same thing as the first level, but with a night filter in the background. Hey, it's no Picasso, but it's easy on the eyes. This time around, we got these piranha plant dudes, but wait a second. Don't that guy look a bit familiar? Ah, okay. So these bolts are telling me to jump over to that platform. Nothing unusual here. Oh, okay. This is a cruel trick. Oh, okay. So you can get across. I just didn't jump well enough. Go figure. Well, now that we've gotten past this, let's have it lead us to the exit. It obviously led me over here with the bolts. Why the hell does the ledge, which looks like an area to leap from, lead to absolutely nothing? Everything in this game is maddening to the eyes. Not only can I not figure out where to go, but when I'm walking casually around, the game leads me into death traps. Nope. I'm done. The gig is up. I am no longer subjecting myself to this torture. That would be masochistic. As for the rest of this game, I mean, what do you expect? No, seriously. What do you expect? Because it's what, it's what you expect. It's like space robot level, ancient pyramids level. Ooh, it's a haunted house level. Mighty Max, the entire fucking game is in here as a level. What's the cliche you know of? Hey, hey it's a home improvement level. I'm surprised we didn't see a level where the... And... Who stole the cookies from the cookie jar? No, 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 no. Anyone else notice this bird can talk? What the fuck's that about, right? I'd like to thank you for watching. Now, if you could just click the links right in front of you, it'll take you to more of my videos. So click them. Please.